Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The science of mine and nine, the science of justice, is the science of all human rights, of all a man's rights of person and property, of all his rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is the science which alone can tell any man what he can and cannot do, what he can and cannot have, what he can and cannot say, without infringing the rights of any other person. It is the science of peace, and the only science of peace, since it is the science which alone can tell us on what conditions mankind can live in peace, or ought to live in peace, with each other. Lysander Spooner, Natural Law or the Science of Justice the beauty, simplicity, and justice of natural law is a thing to behold. It harms no one and protects everyone, this the essence of freedom. Nothing else is necessary concerning man's interactions with man, as natural law is based upon the premise of doing no harm to another, no use of force against another, and no infringement upon another or his property. Natural laws alone are the only laws necessary as any laws prescribed and legislated by one man, or any group of men, over another, is not only immoral, it is immediately destructive of all natural law. Man's laws are an abomination, and by design are meant to regulate, restrict, harm, or control others, which is a violent affront to the actual rights of all men. No man-made laws that stray in any way from natural law should be tolerated or followed. The foundation and justification of natural law is centered on truth, honesty, and exacting justice, without any bias or undue force in the process. Each individual has to be responsible for upholding natural law. This can be done independently or with a collective of individuals working together, so long as any and all seeking and protecting justice do so voluntarily and without any evidence of coercion. There cannot be any shifting of blame in order to avoid guilt, dishonesty, or power seeking in any legitimate free society, but of course, a society of this nature is simply peaceful anarchy, strictly based only on natural law. In my days as a child, these lessons were learned very early, as children were taught not to steal, never to harm others or their property and possessions, that what is theirs, is theirs, and what is not, is not and to protect the natural rights of other children. If only adults could live by the rules of children, what a different world this would be. The laws of nature, natural laws, do not need to be written down or commanded by the state, as simply understanding that one cannot do any harm to another or infringe on another's life, property, and freedom is a sufficient understanding of right and wrong. With this knowledge in hand, why then are hundreds of thousands or more laws made arbitrarily by this heinous government? There is a law for seemingly every single aspect of life? As I said earlier this year, no one, no statisticians, and not even this government itself, has any clue as to how many federal laws exist. No one knows how many rules, restrictions, and regulations there are, and it is impossible to find an answer to this question. The Federal Register alone, the daily repository of all proposed and final federal rules and regulations has well over 85,000 pages. The Code of Federal Regulations through 2019 has 186,000 pages, and the Federal Register pages for the past decade eclipsed 800,000 pages. This alone is unimaginable. But of course, there are more. There is a law for every aspect of our lives in this country. And there are a completely separate set of international laws, state laws, county laws, city laws, and licensing laws for every activity or thought. This is total insanity, and why every single citizen can be deemed a criminal at any given moment. 
Even as far back as in the times of Roman historian Tacitus, he stated that, the more corrupt the state, the more numerous the laws. The U.S. has more laws by far than any other nation on earth in history, and therefore is the most corrupt and criminal of all time. There are only a few legitimate natural laws to live by in order to respect the rights of man, but with governments, there are no limits to bogus laws. In fact, all government laws are against peaceful people, so this government is using the force of arms to compel the masses to obey or else. This breaks every natural law, while at the same time enforcing its illegal mandates on the entire population. This lies, cheats, steals, rapes, tortures, commits murder by war, both domestically and internationally, ignoring every natural right, but demands its enslaved population to obey without question its fraudulent legislation. This is the reverse of all sanity and justice. The real crimes committed by man against man are easily understood, as logic, reason, and common sense will uncover. All one has to understand are the simple tenets of natural law. All real crimes come down to harm by one or more against another or against the many, all driven by aggression. In any society based only on natural law, these crimes can be addressed immediately and severely if necessary, so long as the initial force is only acted upon due to self-defense. This protective posture, whether by one or many, is completely legitimate and can not only stop the felonious behavior by the few without resort to any interfering state, but will serve as a major deterrent to those who choose to live by criminal means. In other words, the state is completely unnecessary if honest freedom is sought. The entirety of this line of thinking breaks down immediately once the state has assumed power, due to the fact that the people at large have acquiesced to rule by the few most powerful. The very idea of government has been promoted since the beginning of time, as a way for the few to control the many, all based on the unnatural concept of extreme fear which exists in the minds of the irresponsible masses due to anxious trepidation of monsters from afar and within. This unwarranted fear and need for protection is planted in the minds of the people from birth and throughout their lives, and this is of course done by design in order to subdue the natural traits of self-sufficiency and personal responsibility. Without the chains of government and its massive propaganda campaigns meant to brainwash all, there would be no need to fear, and therefore, a harmonious and peaceful existence would be not only common, but also demanded by each individual. This brings to mind a very prescient quote by Etienne de la Bode that describes the psychological breakdown that occurs once rule and in place and voluntarily accepted. It is incredible how as soon as a people become subject, it promptly falls into such complete forgetfulness of its freedom that it can hardly be roused to the point of regaining it, obeying so easily and willingly that one is led to say that this people has not so much lost its liberty as won its enslavement. Natural law is the only road to freedom, and the only sane governing system, as it is self-governing and without contradiction. Moral behavior and any obligatory responsibility for others, on the other hand, cannot be mandated or ordered, it must be voluntary, and dependent on each individual's want, need, or penchant for charity. It never can be forced or mandatory, made legal or illegal, as moral behavior is only up to each and every individual acting from a position of willing consent. Governments and those who control governments are evil to the core, and this cannot be questioned by any individual capable of thinking critically. The only mission of rule is rule, which decimates any idea of freedom and the natural law of mankind. The abolishment of government can only lead to a better place, eliminating the chains that not only bind us, but destroy our very consciousness. A man's natural rights are his own, against the whole world, and any infringement of them is equally a crime, whether committed by one man, or by millions, whether committed by one man, calling himself a robber, or by millions calling themselves a government. Lysander Spooner, No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority. Now, it's time for me to hear from you, what are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, 
I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.